Oh, what is up, everyone? Welcome to episode 71, right? 71 mm -hmm. of the Hot Stove Podcast. I'm your host, Zach Diaz. I'm here with Mark and Josh, uh, hopefully with less technical problems this time. But we we got we got some some stuff to hit you with. But before we get the show started today, make sure to follow us on Twitter at Hot Stove Pod. It's at Hot Stove Pod on Twitter. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the like button, hit the notification bell, so you know, uh, so so you know when we put stuff out. Leave a comment on this video, as well, uh, if you feel like commenting. Is that it? Subscribe, like, comment, share, um, ring the bell, uh, ring the bell. Right. Um, otherwise, be sure to tune in Saturdays for Outside the Box Score on wherever it is now i think it's on this very youtube channel now it that's should right. be on this very youtube channel uh along with awesome. a lot uh, outside the box tours on here and i've also thrown my hat into the ring in the hot stove cinematic universe yeah allegedly i what? i just like to point that out that i had no idea this existed until i saw a tweet about it yesterday you know, it's funny it does. because Josh was like, thank you to Nunez for, you know, granting us to use this space. I was like, I don't think, it, does Nunez know about this? No one mentioned a word to me, which yeah. I don't care that much. I'm just saying. It was not you. brought to my attention beforehand. Uh, but yeah, watch Josh's thing. I don't know if they're going to continue to do it every Monday. I don't, Monday, I don't Wednesdays, like Fridays, sharp or stupid. Three times yeah. a week? You're a loser to him. I mean, it, you got to do it. You got to throw it out there. It's college basketball. There's games every day. Tune in. Sure. Yeah. Point. Me, I got Mark. I got a rotating guest of losers. Mark, the Sham, Stone Sports, Nunez, welcome yourself. If you're not yep. slaving away at the old big old target there. No, I, I if it's during the day, I will be slaving away at the big old target. I, I work I, seven to four every day. Josh, I also just thought of this. I'm not going to be around tomorrow. How are you doing the show tomorrow? I got a guy. I you got a guy. Yeah, I got a guy. But how are you gonna get it on the hot stove YouTube? I don't know. I mean, that's a logistical <laughs> problem I didn't even think about. Yeah, I mean, I'm the producer of the show, John. I'm not gonna be on there tomorrow. I got a guy. I got a guy. <laughs> he got a guy. He's got a guy. Can we not hash this out live? How about that? Yeah, we're, live. No, we're live. <laughs> we're live. We're live. I was we're waiting live. for it. Was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't announce it. We're live. We're doing a show right now. Um, but yeah, watch that too, apparently, as often as, as they do it. Um, who knows, right? Sharp or stupid. Sharp or stupid. Um, which is good because I think it actually lends itself better to a live segment uh, than what we did last week because by the time the episode had come out, the games had already happened. It's sure it's less yeah. interesting. Um, but anywho, we've got some fun stuff planned for today. Uh, we've got some trivia. I've got a couple of different games that I want to play. One that I came up with, uh, and one that I stole from a different podcast, but it's still going to be fun. Regardless. Oh yeah. Um, and then we're going to do a Thanksgiving foods draft. Uh, the three of us or if Austin shows up. It'll mm -hmm. be the four of us. We'll be drafting our favorite Thanksgiving foods. Um, and then we're going to do a little look ahead at the NFL Week 12. Best bets, yada, yada. FanDuel lineups hit on the way out, right? So to get started, I do have one trivia question for today. Uh, and it goes as follows. So all of the MLB awards have been announced for uh, the season. Mm -hmm. Uh, and in part of that is the Cy Young Awards. Uh, they were won by Sandy Alcantara of the Marlins and Justin Verlander, uh, of the Astros. There were two players in major league baseball this year to hit a home run off of both Cy Young winners. Two players hit a home run off of both Justin Verlander and Sandy Alcantara this year. I want you to tell me who those two players are. I'll give you a hint right off the bat. They play on the same team. Uh, I'll go with Justin Turner. No. Max Muncy. Not a Dodgers player. 
No Dodgers. What? See, now I have to think what National League team played the AL West or teams played the AL West and what American League teams played the NL East. <laughs> hmm. Some would say, and I'll, I'll narrow this down for you, they played each other. Oh, they did? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Um, Trout? No. I'll give you another hint. One of these players won some hardware this season. Aaron Judge? It's not Aaron no. Judge. That's a good guess. Julio Rodriguez. Julio Rodriguez is one of them. So then we need a uh, who's the dumpy guy? Who's the guy with the thick dumper? Kale Raleigh? Was it Kale not, Raleigh? It's not big dumper. It's not Cal Raleigh, unfortunately. Um <laughs> Ty France. No, it's not Ty France either. And now it's now it's time for you to start naming Eugenio Suarez. It is not Eugenio Suarez. Is it one uh, Je- Jessamaya Winker? No. <laughs> uh, the the bum they're getting rid of, Jared Klinik? Klinik? Kellenick, and no. I don't no, think no. he's got two career home runs yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just... I just know that this is more embarrassing for Mark at this point to just name the. Mariners <laughs> I mean, roster. we're just naming the Mariners. It I don't is... have. I'm done. I no, we're not. I'm now cashed out. I had Suarez, Ty France, Thick Dumper. I'm done. Kyle Lewis. He's dead. It's not Kyle Lewis. I had yeah. Kyle Lewis, but I thought I thought he was he actually is, dead. He is fairly dead. He just got traded um, to the Diamondbacks. Yes. Where people he go is, because the Mariners got. T- uh, Teoscar Hernandez from the Blue Jays. It's true. Who, where, didn't the speedy guy for the Diamondbacks go somewhere? Or am I just – no, that didn't happen. The speedy guy for the Diamondbacks? You know the guy who runs really fast? Run the I don't know who Thomas? you're referring to, though. Who hmm? would you say, Mark? Small Alex white guy? Thomas? I, I'm not He was a rookie. Yeah, might have been. No, he didn't go anywhere. He's one fast. of the top prospects in baseball. Fast guy, Diamondbacks. I'll find him. <laughs> Um, other Seattle. Tim LaCastro, not Tim LaCastro. He plays for the Yankees now. Hey, he's been in the Yankees for like two years. Oh, yeah. not him then. I'm shout out, <laughs> shout out, Auburn, New York native Tim LaCastro. Just when you the look up, I'm getting hit by pitches. By the way, yeah. Also, uh, most consecutive stolen bases to start a career with 28. That's a good stat. Um, Corbin Carroll. I think that's what I was thinking. Of. Oh yeah, no, he, he was also- the. Oh, he's the one I was thinking of, not Alec Thomas. Yeah, Corbin Carroll. He's very fast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm done with that now. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I, I got to go back to thinking about Seattle Mariners. Um, Carlos Santana. No, not Carlos. Was he, Santana. was he on them this year? or Was that last year? Yeah. No, he played for. Oh. He got traded to the Mariners this year. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mark, who plays second for the Mariners? Excuse me. That's a great question. Who plays second base for the Seattle Mariners? Um, I'll tell you, it's not Adam Frazier. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it certainly isn't Adam Frazier. Uh, I'm calling it for myself. I'm out. It's not Mitch Hanniger. Nope. See, all their good players were, like, hurt. So they just had a bunch of, like, they did a bunch of up and down. You're very quickly running out of Seattle Mariners. I know. It's it, how often did this guy play? Every day. He oh. might have, he might have played the most games on the team. Oh. Who am I forgetting? He played 145 games this year. What? Who's their catcher? Or is that the thick boy? That's no, that's big ca- that's that's big dumper Cal Raleigh. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. you want to hear a fun fact? Played 145 games this year, had six home runs. Oh, and two of them came against fuck Verlander and Alcantara. Yep, I'll go even further. He has played Major League Baseball for six years, has 27 career home runs. Are, are we sure this isn't Adam Frazier? I'm certain it's not Adam <laughs> Frazier. 
Um, oh, JP Crawford. It is JP Crawford. Yes, he only had six home time. runs this year. Yeah. Wasn't oh, over this right. I, I mean, yeah. I know the guy has a wet noodle for a bat, but like, I, I expected more power than that, though. Um, yeah, Julio Rodriguez and JP Crawford, the only two players to hit home runs off of both Cy Young winners in 2022. Hmm. Pretty good. It's a fun fact. All right. Now we got that trivia out of the way. It's time to play a game. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, Stop sir. the presses. Yeah, yeah. I screenshotted something yesterday. I wanted to say it as a trivia question. Okay. Go for I, it. I have one. <clears throat> there is one player to have at least 50 yards in seven games since week four in the NFL. So every week. Since 50 week. yards receiving. Sorry. Yes. There's one player to have at least 50 yards in seven games since week four. Huh. Noah Brown. <laughs> Is this all Dude. pass catchers or like just anybody? It can be anybody. Yeah. 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 But I'll assume it's a receiver. It is a receiver. Okay. Debo? No. Uh, Amari Cooper? No. That's a good guess. He's probably put too guess. many road games in there. Um, uh, CD Lamb? No. I'll give you – I'll narrow it down to a conference for you if you'd like. He sure. is in the AFC. Okay. Oh, it's seven weeks since week four because it can account for bye weeks as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, um, Travis Kelsey. No. No, he had that 25-yard game with four touchdowns. Which is still in field. Josh Palmer. No. As, um, as someone who had stock in Josh Palmer and fantasy for about a week and a half, it certainly wasn't him. He's not in the AFC West. Okay. Tyler Boyd? No. T. Higgins? No. No, no not Paris a, not a Campbell. Campbell? No. I'm trying to outsmart you too much. This is the problem. Christian Kirk. I'll tell you, he's not a number one on this team. Okay. Um, and you've already guessed his team. Like from another player you've already got, yeah. Donovan Peoples Jones. That's what yes! it is. Yes. There it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really? I did I for I saw that stat the other day now that I think about it. Um, He's I think I heard it on like a fantasy football podcast that I was listening to, something like that. Huh. Yeah, man, DPJ is good at football. Yeah, dude, balls out. Yeah, especially right. when he disappears. Yeah, yeah, especially on the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, uh, sure, sure, sure. Then you put the burger on the grill. Then you Daddy. make sure the cheat. My favorite, my favorite is is when he says, "Then you make sure the cheese is melt." Then you put the mozzarella sticks in the fryer. Yeah. All right. Done with trivia. We have a game to play. First of two games that we can that we're going to be playing today. This one is an original idea from this noggin right here. Off the dome from one Zach Nunez himself. And it's a one timer. This game will never be coming back. <laughs> this game. This I game is your- called. Yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say I love your confidence level. Oh yeah, no, this is. What, I mean, it's only really meant to be played once. To be fair, mm-hmm. uh, this game is called "Does He Play Wide Receiver for the New York Giants?" <laughs> uh, the Giants have some fun injury luck right now. Um, they also have. They're also bereft of skill position talent outside of Saquon Barkley. So, I am gonna. I have five names here. Uh, some of them play wide receiver for the New York Giants. Mm-hmm. Some of them don't. It's that simple. You just All have right. to tell me whether or not they play wide receiver for the New York Giants. 
Okay. Easy now, I will say I practice squad players are eligible. Okay. Ah, Jesus. Uh, because, because they're under contract with the team. <clears throat> sure, sure. Uh, give me one second to clarify something for myself here. Yeah. All right. First name Marcus Johnson. Does he or does he not play wide receiver for the New York Giants? He does. I'm going to say he doesn't. Josh is correct. He does play wide receiver for the I, New York Giants. Who was the guy that returned the punt against the Jets on Sunday? Oh, I the have Patriots. No Marcus was, Jones. Marcus Jones. Marcus Jones. That's it. Okay. Oh, okay. That, that's who I thought he was talking about. Uh, yeah, Marcus Johnson. Let's take a look. He's a stud. He had a good camp this year. Marcus Johnson this year has six catches for 63 yards. Stud. It's not bad. It's not a catch. Next, <laughs> next name. <laughs> next name in this game. Khalil Pimpleton. I feel does like he would, or does he not play wide receiver for the New York Giants? Khalil I feel Pimpleton. like I would have been made aware of Khalil Pimpleton before right now if he did in some way play wide receiver for the New York Giants. So I'm going to go with no again. I want to believe that Zach could have come up with this name, but I don't know. I'm going to say he does. He does play wide receiver. Uh. Josh, you are once again correct. Yes. Khalil Pimpleton is on the Giants practice squad roster. Uh, Khalil Pimpleton is a undrafted free agent in the 2022 NFL draft. Played his college ball at Central Michigan and is now on the Giants practice squad. There we go. Khalil Pimpleton. All right, that's 2 nothing in favor of Josh in this game here. Mark is pulling up Khalil Pimpleton's Wikipedia page. <laughs> I, I, was hoping, stuff. I was hoping there was going to be a pick. Yeah, hey, Central Michigan. They played for the Lions. Max Special, Special Teams, teams player, player of the year. year? Hey, nice. This Pimpleton fella ain't no scrub. <laughs> nice. Good for him. I love this guy. Khalil. All right. Next name. We got three more names left. Next name. Theodore Geisel. I, it's got to be Tails eventually. No. He does not play wide receiver for the New York Giants. Uh, you are both correct. He does not play wide receiver for the New York Giants. That is the birth name of Dr. Seuss. <laughs> <laughs> it is Dr. Seuss's name. <laughs> What was it again? Theodore Ge Geisel. Geisel. Oh, I've actually I've heard that before. Yeah, that is that is Dr. Seuss's name. <laughs> Kyrie must hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Kyrie said, Probably thank true. God he doesn't play a professional sport. <laughs> yeah. Probably be the commissioner. Uh, all right. Next. Um Joshua. next name. Sorry, mm -hmm. I had a brain fart there for a second. Isaiah Hodgins. I've heard that name. Isaiah yeah, Hodgins. Yeah, I'm with you, Mark. I feel... I know that's a person. Yeah. Does he play wide receiver for the New York Giants? I'm going to go no. No, he does not. I gotta make up ground. I'm gonna go yes. Mark, you are correct. Isaiah Hodgins does play wide receiver for the New York Giants. Uh, he played wide receiver for the Bills earlier this season, then was acquired acquired by the Giants. That's uh, that's why I heard table. his name. In two games with the Giants, Isaiah Hodgins has recorded. Uh, let's see here, five catches for seventy yards which is both more receptions and yards than Kenny Galladay has all season. <laughs> in 11 games. Yep. Yeah. He hasn't played in all of those. He hasn't? 
No, Kenny Galladay's only played like two games, I think. Well, Isaiah yeah. Hodgins just got to the team on Halloween, and he has more receiving yards and catches than the man they're paying like $20 million a year. Facts. So. What a scrub. There you go. Isaiah Hodgins. One final name for you. You know, our fifth name here. Uh, Josh has three. Mark has one. I've got two. Mark has two. Mark has two. Sorry. Sorry. I can't count. Mark has two. Final name here. Johnny Johnson the third. Yeah. You're going to tell us that this is the real name of former Orioles shortstop J.J. Hardy. <laughs> Johnny Johnson the third. I think this was a Johnny Sins character once. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go that he does not. He yeah, does not. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna say no. Jonathan J. Johnson the third does not play for the wide receiver for the New York Giants. Uh, you are both correct. Johnny Johnson the third does not play receiver for the New York Giants. He plays receiver for the Houston Texans. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. That was the debut and the only episode of Does He Play Wide Receiver for the New York Giants? I, Josh I think, is your winner by a score I, of four to three. I think we could bring this game back in other ways. For sure. Yeah. Does this guy come off the bench for the Orlando Magic? Hey, the Magic are the number one lead pass team. All right. As someone who pays for lead pass, I'm not kidding when I say the, the most interesting attraction on that service is the Orlando Magic. Yeah, I I also have league passes. I've watched a couple of Magic games. Yeah. Hey, I also made a three dollar bet on FanDuel that day. Yeah, I had no, I did not, and I don't have league pass. But all right, well that's the game, and we've got something else to move on to. This one was an idea that I respectfully have taken from uh, the fellows over at Cespedes Family Barbecue and their podcast, the Baseball Barbacast. Um, I was listening to their new episode this morning, and they they played a game that I thought would be fun. So we're going to be playing a game of Mad Libs. Oh, okay. This is not and what I thought. Okay. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through – I'm going to be finding players' uh, Saber pages, baseball players, their Saber pages. Mm-hmm. Saber, for those who don't know, the Society for American Baseball Research – it's basically a large database uh, about baseball players and yada, yada, yada. It's like yada. pagan. People sure. against goodness and normalcy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Um, you familiar with Dragnet, Mark? <laughs> yeah, I was just like, what the hell? <laughs> so we're going to be going to some fun Saber pages, and I'm going to be reading some snippets and letting you guys fill in the blanks along the way, basically. Okay. Uh, so our first subject here is a fella by the name. It, it might. I don't think it's the first time we've talked about this topic on this show. It's a fella by the name of Pussy. Okay. If you're from, if you're not familiar, this man's name is Pussy Tabo. Oh yeah, I believe he was discussed on uh, the was he on the old timey baseball names episode. He might have been. I don't yeah. really remember. Nice. So we're going to be discussing the life and times of old pussy. Okay. All right. I'm going to start reading. I I will. Yeah, I will start reading. uh, And then I will cue you guys in to fill in the blanks. So make sure you're paying attention. Mm -hmm. Let's see. here. Charles Alston Tabo was born. I'm sorry. Charles Alston Tabo made the most of his brief baseball career appearing in two games in the majors for the Cleveland Spiders, even though he only played two abbreviated seasons as a professional. Originally started out in the New England England Association League. Uh, When that collapsed in 1895, he quickly signed a deal with Portland, the Portland Main Club in the New England League. Despite that commitment, Thibaut blank. Mark, I will let this one up to you. Despite that commitment, Tabo told him to fuck off and went to play for the Spiders. Oh, whoa. Is that what we're looking for? We're looking for one word. There's a Mad Lib. What? No, you can just fill in the rest of the sentence. Oh, uh, Mark, how much do you know about the life of Pussy Tabo? Not much. What if I told you that that's exactly what he did? 
Come on! Despite that commitment to the Portland Maine club, Tabot caught a train to Cleveland and joined the Spires for a series against Washington. (laughs) These are direct words. I swear to God, this is exactly what he did. (laughs) He signed a deal with one team and then immediately jumped on a train to Cleveland to play baseball for the Spiders. I think I should win. I think I won the game. And there's not much. We're just having fun. This is yeah. Charles Alston Tabot was born in Worcester, Massachusetts on February 22nd, 1870. His father may have blank, Josh. His father, what did you say, 1870? Yeah. Okay, okay. His father may have uh, his father may have contracted a disease fighting in the Civil War and died shortly after his birth. <laughs> uh, not quite. His father may have been born in France. <laughs> it, a, a, a fate worse than contracting a disease in the Civil War. Being, <laughs> being, yeah, being French. French. Like I mentioned, Thibault, uh signed a, a deal with the Portland Maine Club in the New England League and then promptly fucked off to Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he joined his teammates in Cleveland, he joined two players uh, that shared his namesake, the brothers George and Patsy Thibault. Who I both thought you were going to say pussy. Cleveland's... No, 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 no. no. <laughs> his the two main... players, Pussy Martin and Pussy Johnson. <laughs> the, 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 the brothers became... George and Patsy Thibault, who both played for the Spiders as well. Charles, pussy, in this instance, mm-hmm. pussy was not related to George and Patsy Tabot, as some have said. This is a myth. He's not related to those two. Some have speculated that Charles was brought in by Patsy, Cleveland's manager, to blank, Mark. <laughs> Formed the dynamic trio Trey Pousset. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a joke I was going to make when we thought that all three of their names were Pussy. <laughs> um, Some have speculated that Pussy was brought in by Patsy, who was also Cleveland's manager, to confuse opposing managers with a lineup full of several ambiguous taboos. <laughs> <laughs> he just wanted to write the bow down in a bunch of different lineup spots. This is not, I'm not joking. Say? He wrote to Bo like ambiguously. He was this is what was his plan. Yeah, it wasn't P to Bo, T right. to Bo. And just decided, like by strategy, it was like, oh, they got a lefty on the mound. Fuck it. Pussy, you're going in the game right now. You're that's where you're <laughs> headed in, right? Yeah. That's this so guy's funny. a switch hitter. This Tabo fella is a switch hitter. He gained six inches after his last at bat. <laughs> what the hell? Hey, what do yeah. you got? Patsy formerly Oliver Wendell Tabot could potentially list one or two Tabos on his lineup card and later decide which of the three to play or bat in a specific order. <laughs> this guy put Aaron Boone to shame. He would win the eight manager of the year awards. <laughs> At this time, the national newspapers identified Charles as C.A. Tabot, which highlights his initials C.A.T., which very may well account for his unusual nickname, Pussy. I like to think it was just because everyone hated his guts. In the two abbreviated games with Cleveland, Thibault fared well, reaching base five times, knocking in a run, stealing a base, and scoring three times. That was it, though. His major league career is over. Portland, the manager of the Portland club that he originally signed with, uh, his name was Leonard. I don't I don't quite know his last name. Thibault? It says Portland manager Leonard. Uh Saw Tabo's name in the newspapers on the morning of July 23rd, playing in the National League, a league he had not signed with to play. Uh, he immediately suspended Tabo, pussy, because he was still under contract with the New England League. He immediately that. suspended Tabo and filed a grievance with the National League as he had already filed uh, pussy's contract with New England League president Nick Young. The arguments dragged on into August of that year, but Patsy Tabo remember manager of Cleveland was forced to relinquish his rights uh, to the new England league. He did so bitterly declaring what Josh. That's my pussy. (laughs) Yeah. 
Uh, Patsy Tabo <laughs> relinquishes lights rights bitterly, declaring that the player is quote isn't much good anyway. Parting <laughs> words. <laughs> He sucks. Take him, <laughs> you fucking asshole. Departing words that the Boston Globe described as sour grapes. <laughs> you want pussy? He sucks. <laughs> he hasn't gotten a lick of it since he's been here. He's batting under 100. Take him. What I was going to say if it was my turn was, take him, it's the worst pussy I've ever had anyway. <laughs> pussy returned home. But records indicate he didn't play with Portland in 1895. He played a couple of games with a Pittsfield club called Stanley. He did re-sign with the Portland club over the winter and joined the team in the spring of 1980, or 1896. In the final preseason exhibition game against Lawrence on April 30th, 1896, Tabo was what, Mark? R- read the sentence again. He did resign with the Portland club over the winter and joined the team in 1896 in the final preseason exhibition game on April 30th. Tabo was blank struck by lightning. <laughs> Tabo was intentionally beamed with a pitch <laughs> and was left on unconscious on the field for more than 15 minutes. The, <laughs> the game was called in the eighth inning after the incident Tabo was sent to the hospital where he stayed for more than two weeks. Uh, Pussy Tabo entered the hospital at five foot ten inches tall and 175 pounds. He ended up losing 25 pounds by the time he was released from the hospital, and he never appeared in another professional baseball game again. Pussy Tabo died at his longtime residence in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, on March 25th, 1950. That's he lived another. He lived another. Uh, Holy shit! Was that fifty-five years after that? So yeah. Good. He died in eight, 1950 at the age of eighty. After what, Josh? <laughs> he died uh, at the age of eighty after um, after being hit with yet another baseball <laughs> to the skull <laughs> that rendered him unconscious. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, it's pretty anticlimactic. All it says is that he died at the age of at the age of eighty after a long illness. <laughs> so, I like to think it was the same guy. <laughs> I'll get you, house. pussy. I'll get you. <laughs> He's buried at the local St. Joseph Cemetery in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. We can go see and, pussy. And that is the life and times of pussy to of bow. pussy to bow. That was excellent. I'd like to. We should do that again. Do we have another one? <laughs> we do not have another one. Oh, okay. That was the one I had. Where is Pittsfield, Massachusetts? I'm looking it up. I let's, do not make know. A, let's make a pilgrimage. <laughs> I'm glad you guys enjoyed. Pittsfield, oh my Mass. God. That's, that's the funniest. Dude, dude is it it's not- in the Berkshires. It's pretty close. It's just past Albany. Yeah. It's like oh. maybe four hours. Beautiful. Five hours. I was gonna say, I've it. definitely driven through Pittsfield before. We're going to see. We're going to. The, we're getting bougie. The grave of Pussy to Bow. We're getting a cabin in the woods in the Berkshires. We're spending a weekend and we're seeing Pussy. That would be <laughs> like unbelievable <laughs> commitment to the bit. I would be so down for that. <laughs> we, we've got to like vlog the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, like, we would definitely. Like the foolish pussy. baseball or something would see that and be like, yeah. these kids, they got the stuff. Yeah. They're going to see Pussy to Bow. I've done a lot less for Pussy. Okay. That's... Uh yeah. So all Isn't all that... credit to Cespedes Family Barbecue. That was also the the Saber article they used for this week's episode. So I, I didn't feel like looking for a new one. I just went with it. Um moving forward, I'll I'll be searching for some other ones as well. So we can continue moving forward with the segment because that was fun. That's fantastic. I want to do that every week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before we get into any NFL picks, any betting stuff, yada, yada, we have one more thing to do. It's a very important week in North America. Well, in the United States in particular. So long as you're like not an indigenous person. If you uh, celebrate Thanksgiving, fuck you. No, yeah, I, I think I Thanksgiving is all right. I don't know. Uh, I think it's okay. I'm sorry. It, let's let's talk about it. one of the most overrated holidays. I can get with that. 
Thanksgiving kind of stinks. Sure. I'll be honest with you. If the Cowboys didn't play on Thanksgiving every year, I don't know that I'd give two shits about Thanksgiving. Like, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't make the dinner. I wouldn't nope. do the whole thing. I actually wouldn't participate in Thanksgiving. I don't. Uh, my thing, my favorite thing about it is like I was watching was I think it was Guys Grocery Games recently, oh, hell and yeah. they had a thing. It was a Thanksgiving episode, and they were talking about one of the meals they had to make was like Thanksgiving comfort food, and I was like, mm. that's great and all, but like you can't describe Thanksgiving food as comfort food, no, because if it were comfort food, you would make it more than once a year. Yeah, like, I, I actually agree with that. We're, we're we're about to do this thing. Oh, I'm gonna say the meal. Is like the worst part of Thanksgiving. The what? meal is okay. It, I, I, well, uh, you, I, you I don't. Yeah, I don't know if this is. So a, you guys you know, aren't big I'm, like food favorite. I like the food. food. Yeah, I like, I the, like food, the food. Wrong, but like, I just think Thanksgiving's an overrated holiday. I'm interested to see where this goes because I wonder if other people, like, if you guys do things that I don't traditionally. Eat yeah, this is gonna be good. So we're gonna have. We're gonna do four rounds. We should get four picks for mm-hmm. Thanksgiving foods. We'll have a dozen okay. picks in total um, between the four of us. I'll share my screen real quick so we can do. Um, uh, so I've always saw it in these things. Like how are I guess this is just in the eye of the of the drafter. Am I trying to draft the must-haves? Or the things I like the most, you know, this is this is a, yeah. a bit of a back and forth. Can you see? Can you guys yeah. see the wheel? Yeah, it's up on the screen. All right, the wheel stands with Ukraine. If anybody was wondering, uh, but we're gonna spin the wheel to determine the draft order for this draft. So we're gonna go first here, first overall pick in the Thanksgiving draft. Oh yeah, no! goes to Mark. Goes to Mark. Oh. Write that down. Second overall pick in the Thanksgiving draft. Oh no, no, no! no. Goes to Josh. All right, this would have been a lot more fun with another person. We're gonna run yeah. through these. Sixteen would at least. Be- <laughs> I, I was gonna say, I hope you give it a spin for the third. <laughs> yeah, we just need to make sure. Yep. Do we want a fourth on here? We don't have a fourth person. I could grab a fourth right now. I can <laughs> get us a fourth within seconds. I swear to God, I could get us a fourth right now. You know what? Yeah, let's vamp. Yeah. Let's get a fourth person. We'll vamp. Get a fourth. I'm, share- I'm done sharing my screen. We'll be back, and Josh is going to give us a give us get us a fourth person, and we're going to renege. We're going to do this draft again. <laughs> uh, Mark, uh, let's talk some baseball here. Okay. Um, awards were announced. Mm-hmm. Uh, Generally speaking, I think uh, I don't really care about most of them. That was another thing. Another thing they did on the the newest uh, baseball barbercast was they they ranked the awards by how much how it how interesting they were this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, do you have any particular thoughts on any of the winners or any of like my favorite things to look at? Generally speaking, especially in a year like this, where like who was winning the awards was largely a foregone conclusion. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pretty much all around. Yeah, um, National League MVP I thought was interesting because it was Goldschmidt, but that wasn't really a runaway. I expected that to be a lot closer than it actually ended up being. Yeah. Um. I you know I thought Arenado would steal a couple of votes from his teammate. I thought Machado like I actually thought Machado had a chance to sneak in just with Arenado and Goldschmidt uh, splitting votes. Um. But no, I. Yeah, it was chalk this year, basically. I personally, I I thought Brandon Hyde should have won manager of the year in the American League. Uh, You know, Tito did a great job with the young team. And, you know, I'm all all the props in the world to him. But when you're projected to win 63 games at the start of the year and you win 83, that's a pretty big deal. And I know it's like, oh, you know, Adley Rushman got called up and they got a lot better. But at the same time, it's like, how much does one catcher really make a difference? I feel like there is, you know, there is something to be said about how Hyde handled such, again, similarly to Tito. If you want to talk about a young team, you know, doing well, the Orioles are a very young team. They had Adley come up, they had Gunnar uh, Henderson come up, a lot of young players on that team. So I, guys, I thought he probably should have won that one. Are you guys previewing our guests by talking about the Orioles right now? 
Well, no, I didn't know who our guest was. We were just vamping. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to find who voted specifically for who because I, I we know we have this information, obviously. Yeah. Um, well, it's see. like how the the only two people to vote for Otani first place for MVP were both Angels writers. Um. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I found my favorite ballot. That's oh no, I found it. So my favorite thing is looking at some of the down ballot guys uh, to see who gets Yandy Diaz votes. and Sean like Murphy the, getting the MVP votes. Yandy yep. Diaz ninth place vote. My favorite one that came out here is a ballot uh, by a person by the name of Tracy Ringlesby. Uh, Tracy Ringlesby here is a writer for uh, InsideTheSeams.com. Quite literally, a baseball writer who is in the Baseball Hall of Fame. He has been doing mm -hmm. this for for fucking ever. Uh, yeah, based I'm out familiar. of Colorado, uh, who he had a ninth place vote on his ballot for Daniel Bard, the uh, yeah! the Rockies closer this year, uh, voted for him for MVP in like a very clear like fuck you guys. I don't have to do literally anything to appease anyone. I'm just gonna like. Mm -hmm. We're just going to do random shit. I mean, why you know? do we need to pick 10 people for MVP? Sure. I mean, it creates moments like this, Mark. Well, and I love it. Because like... now, now Daniel Bard forever on his baseball reference page will have MVP 16 next to his name for the 2022 who, season. Who was the Cubs really? Was it Ryan Tapera? Did he get a vote? Yeah, he got a vote last year, two years ago. Okay. Um, I believe... Movie. I believe it was Ryan Tapera. Uh, and it's just. I just Let's double check see. that. Adam, welcome to the show, by the yeah. way. Adam, would you Ryan Tapera, yes, yeah, thank got you. One, one Plum tenth Plum. place thank vote you. in 2020. Yeah. Um, in an effort to vamp, well, I went and got you, Adam. They're now talking about their favorite all star ballots from this year. Or, no, sorry, no, uh, MVP no. voting. My, my. Yeah, here's some. Uh, some of the down ballot AL guys for 2020. Um, Liam Hendricks, kind of funny, but nothing. Ryan Tapera, tying with Ian Happ, Max Free, Dansby Swanson, and Devin Williams. With his 3.92 ERA. Yep. Well, that's last year, obviously, yeah, yeah, right? Two, two years ago. Said, two, oh, okay. Yeah, two years ago. 2020. It's the short in 2020 season. But, anyways, I actually think that this uh, Mr. Ringlesby's. Um, uh, ballot kind of gets funnier uh, as it goes along. So if you look at it, he voted for uh, Goldschmidt one, mm -hmm. right? Voted for Goldschmidt number one, had Freddie Freeman second, a move that not many people made. Frederick had a hell of a year. He had Freddie Freeman second. He had Julio Urias third. <laughs> Julio Urias third for MVP. Uh, then he had Manny Machado, Pete Alonso fifth, um, Francisco Lindor sixth. Okay, you're you might you might be thinking, oh, there's a name missing here. That's strange. Mm -hmm. uh, he <laughs> had Mookie Betts seventh. Okay, uh, <laughs> Nolan Arenado eighth on his ballot, and Daniel Bard, the closer for his hometown Rockies, ninth. That was Tracy Ringlesby's ballot right there. Who 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 was tenth? Uh, Ryan McMahon. Uh, it doesn't show. It only Daryl Strawberry. The <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, <Daryl laughs> he's just voting for Rockies of old. Dante I love Bichette. like some of these other ballots too. Like I, if I could get access to the the Cy Young ballots, like those are really good. Uh, there are some of those that are pretty funny. I thought uh, someone had Adley Rushman in like the top five for their vote. Yeah. I think Adley and Julio both got like top five votes. Yeah, they um, each got a couple. Yeah, David O'Brien for the Athletic, uh, based out mm -hmm. of Atlanta, voted for Michael Harris sixth on his ballot. Um, so that was fun. Like well. that is just clearly hometown bias. Yeah, which I, again Daniel, I'm all for. I find yeah, it put, hilarious. Putting Daniel Bard ninth is just, especially with the rest of that ballot, is just a middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Paul Goldschmidt. We can agree it's Paul Goldschmidt. The rest of these do not matter. <laughs> yeah. Also, Todd Brozayek from Milwaukee of the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel having a, an eighth place vote for Jeff McNeil. 
Um, yeah. Simply because he won the batting title. That's the some squirrel. real man shit right there. Yeah. I like it. Those are I, those are my favorite things. Like again, Yandy Diaz getting a, a ninth place vote. Yeah, so did Sean uh, Murphy. Sean Murphy also yeah. got one. So that's a little, a little talk for you. We like to welcome special guest, the Sham. Uh, Thanks, Adam Powell Palmer himself, to join to join us for uh, the rest of this episode. Um, we're gonna be doing something uh, we, that we already just started to do. But we're <laughs> we're gonna do it again. Yeah. Uh, Run it back, baby. Yeah. Oh, we're what, gonna, are we, what are we doing? We're, spending we're doing a Thanksgiving food draft. Uh, so we're gonna set the order, uh, and and then we're gonna draft food for Thanksgiving. Josh, did you only ask because you didn't tell Adam before he joined? Or no, I did, and Adam foolishly said, "I have no prep for this," and I said, "Nobody does." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's yeah. It's just food. I can't believe after 71 episodes of the show, Adam, a few that you've appeared on, you think we prep for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're going to share my screen again here. And we're going to say we're going to do this order again. The Shout out oh, 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 I love this website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Does this, does this <laughs> Sorry. I love this website. <laughs> This- Give it to me. Who gets the number one overall pick? Oh, oh you son of a bitch. Oh, I just don't want my number one can overall I, pick. Can I not have it? I don't want it. Nope. God damn it. The luck of the draw, Josh. Damn, dude. I don't want to be lucky. I would be- <clears throat> All right. Mark is going to be number two. Yeah. I'm going to be number three. And of course, we got to give it that final spin. Oh, Rick. <laughs> Adam, I will tell you, when we first did it, obviously you would have been last. And now, of course, you are last. So uh-huh. I was third, though, first. So fine. Second, second. All right. So that's our order. It's myself. It is, or I'm sorry, it's Josh, Mark, myself, and then Adam. It's going to be a snake draft, of course. Mm-hmm. We don't we don't do anything that's not a snake draft here. Um, no. And then we are and we're just going to be four rounds, so sixteen picks here. Um, anything is fair game. Whatever you whatever you find essential as part of your Thanksgiving meal, that's what you got to be drafting. Josh, you are officially on the clock. What's going to be one oh one in the Thanksgiving draft? Yeah. Well, hear me out. I was looking through my options. There's a lot of things. And for me, again, we talked about this before. It comes down to a few things. What do you need that's essential for Thanksgiving and what I ultimately enjoy the most? So I have a couple options, a lot of things I could go for. What do I got to snag? My one, my one, one off the board, it's mashed potatoes. Mashed mm. potatoes, thick boy like me, I could eat a couple spoonfuls, if you know what I mean. I need a second <laughs> helping. I go up to get that second helping, the first scoop is the mashed potatoes, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, just so <clears throat> versatile, of course. She, mashed, I'm a big mixer on the plate of the Thanksgiving food. Everybody getting something, okay? So mashed potatoes is the bed. Almost like think of a rice bowl and you put everything on top. The mashed potatoes is the base for all consumption on Thanksgiving for me. So it has to be has to be mashed potatoes. All right, Mark, you're on the clock, 102. What's the pick? I'm going to go with uh, not necessarily a traditional Thanksgiving food and not always even at my Thanksgiving dinner, but when it is, it's it that for me is like Josh with the mashed potatoes. That's when I go back for the second helping. First thing I go for is that mac and cheese, baby. It's it's that it's that mac and cheese casserole. You got the breadcrumbs on top, throw a little ah. extra pepper on there. Mwah. I just can't stand the breadcrumbs. Oh, I the breadcrumbs. Bread really? <laughs> See, what yeah, you got to yeah. do is. <laughs> you see, here's the thing. Oh, we do it. It is first, before you put it into the into the right. casserole with the breadcrumbs, you just make some creamy mac and cheese. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. And that is your appetizer. <clears throat> yeah, that while you're sitting down watching the Bills game at 1230. And then you, you know, bake off the second. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And then for the actual dinner, that's when you have the casserole. 
I see. So, I see. so it's like like you said, versatile. You got two types of mac and cheese in one dish. Are you kidding me? I gotta go with the mac. Wow. All right. I feel like I've just gotten the steal of the draft here at 103. How do we make it to the third overall pick and the star of the show is still available? Take it. Yeah. I'm picking turkey. I'm picking turkey at 103. It is, it's the reason you have Thanksgiving. It's the reason that the, it's the thing that Thanksgiving is built around. And when a turkey is done well, this is this is the problem. Turkey is a very volatile meat mm-hmm. in its in its quality. If the turkey is done well, and I, I'll tell you what, we have a good turkey in this house. Uh, you spatch cook? What do you do? I don't know what that means. You like <laughs> crash <laughs> back, up, take off the neck, and then spash it down, and it kind of lays flat like this when you cook it? Or no? No, 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 no. We 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 be roasting <clears throat> turkeys. Brian smoked the turkey last year. It was mad good. Mm, so smoked turkey. Did you see that uh, viral video going around Twitter or that man's uh, that man's turkey? It was like squirting the juices. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't. I did not. Big big injectors these <clears throat> days with the turkeys. I yeah. I'm with you on that, Nunez. I've always had bad turkey. My grandma insists yeah. on making turkey. She's an old woman. She cooks it in a bag. That's how they. And she probably it. makes it dry as I'm shit. Gonna, 1,000% Nunez, I swear to God, it comes out of the wrapping, it gets washed off of the goo, take the shit out, put it in a bag and in the oven. Nothing is done to the turkey. Nothing. That sounds... Th- that really sounds... Yeah, it's that sounds, horrible. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She was not gifted with cooking turkey. Woman can cook. Not turkey. <laughs> yeah, see, I th- th- this is the difference. It's like Turkey, I think, is a very volatile meat. But like, yeah. I'm... What's your guys' favorite part if you have a good turkey? I don't know if Josh is familiar. Dark with. Oh, I have seen this video. Yeah, that yeah thing, that's thanks. spatch cook. That's a spatch cook. Okay, yeah. No, we do not. We do not. Uh, <laughs> spatch spatch cook. Cook. Look at that. Yeah. Jesus. I mean, that is. Yeah, juicy. I mean, it's so important to baste your turkey, to inject your turkey. Make sure it gets as moist as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, None. If you're going for part of the bird, what part of the bird are you going for? The skin. I'm ripping yes. the skin off. It's well, skin. Part. The skin, obviously, is and then one. Yeah. I like white meat, personally. Yeah. I'm a dark How white meat of you. guy. How white of you? Uh-huh. I'm a dark meat guy. Yeah. Uh, also, love love a good drum. If I can I get like my that. hands on one of the drumsticks, oh, yeah. The turkey leg is my answer. Yeah. This I'm, is a... I'm, a, I, I'm firm turkey leg enjoyer. Mm-hmm. We're weird. We're, when it comes out... We will stand around it and fight each other like birds picking up scraps, taking off the skin. Oh, yeah. That's eating it there. That's Oh, you guys do that too? Oh, I've that's heard people like, why don't you carve it with it all on it? And I'm like, no. don't leave any of it. Yeah, okay. No, we it rip is, the skin off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rip yeah right I can off. say that we don't We do not do that. We carve it with the with the skin off. Yeah. 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 So everyone can share in the skin, but no, no. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. yeah. It, you yeah. gotta that's valuable, valuable real estate. The skin. There you go. Exactly. Yeah, like I said, I feel like I got a steal getting turkey at 103, but you know, uh it is what it is. Adam, you have the final pick of the first round. You also have the first pick of the second round. Yes, you have two straight and picks here. Let it be known, had you picked anything else, my 104 and 201 would not have been turkey. I think wow. turkey is overrated and it's not even in my top five Thanksgiving foods. Wow. It's a fine bird. Fine it's bird. a fine bird, but just like everything else is just better. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to kick my first pick off with pumpkin pie because <sighs> oh. It, oh, it's, it's such just a good my favorite like part of Thanksgiving, to be honest with you, because you always just like sit there and you eat too much and you sit down and then you're just like, wait a minute, Can I get to stuff myself even further. And then dessert comes around, and then you actually sweet like you want to kill yourself. But it's still worth it. Yes. So, yeah, I go pumpkin pie. I, I, normally, most people can concur that's, like, the best pie on Thanksgiving. A lot of people don't like it, but I, I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not a pumpkin guy, personally. Are you a pecan? Oh, I love pumpkin pie. I'm not really a pecan guy, either. I we, We've got a pie that I feel like I'll get to. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Unless Adam takes it here because he's nah. a sweet boy. No, nah, Mark is Mark is going with that. Mark is going with that rhubarb pie. I <laughs> no, no. <laughs> now, pumpkin pie is um, one of the only pies that I'll even eat on Thanksgiving out of the traditional ones. 
Oh, pie is one of my favorite desserts. Like in terms of like the dessert tier, love a good pie. Pie, mm-hmm. pie is up there. And then for my second pick, kicking off round two, I'm gonna go with a good dinner roll. Oh, that's such a good answer. It's that was gonna be my pick. that was gonna I be my next pick. You stole okay, it from me. It, 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 all three of us had rolls <laughs> back on our draft board. It's so, it's, good. <laughs> it's so good. And it can be paired with anything else that I'm gonna get later on. Right. So I mean, do you even need to sell a dinner roll? Like yeah, you don't no. need to sell. I know Dude, right. it's bread, dog. Like dog bread. <laughs> right. Yeah. Typically bread. my family does crescent rolls. Oh yeah. Really? We, do too. Just, we do too. So good. We do the we king's do. wine. Yeah, I don't know. We we usually have our rolls. I don't I don't remember what kind of rolls we did the last couple of years, but my mom, when we would do it with her, my mom would uh make these rolls where she would like they would be dinner rolls, probably frozen, who fucking knows. They'd yeah. be dinner rolls, uh, and then you, she would like butter them and put sugar on the top before she bakes them. Oh, oh they were so good. So oh, good. Buddy. Kind Wegmans? of like a Texas Roadhouse type thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some more. Similar. Wegmans used to have one of the best dinner rolls like that. They come in these little packages like that. Like you're saying, mm-hmm. it's almost frozen. You just have to heat yeah. them up. They might have been those exact so- rolls. Yeah. yeah. They used I something. They're no good now, but they used to be. I love a good dinner roll. That was such a good pick. That's a great pick. Such a good pick. My second pick. This one might be a little unorthodox. Um, but you know, when you're eating a lot, you know, stuff in your belly, you need something to wash it down with, right? A beverage, some would say. I'm just going to go with beer as my (laughs) next, my next pick in the Thanksgiving draft. What a great beer beer of choice, whatever it may be. It's up to you. Um, but beer is high on my draft board. God, you said beer. Uh, you you thought you got the steal of the draft at three. You got the steal of the draft at six, my friend. <laughs> I mean, <coughs> there's no better pick. I don't even know if you guys thought of that. I'm like two steps ahead. I get beer. Thought of I alcohol. thought of like cocktail. Yeah. I thought yeah, I, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I'm a beer drinker myself. Personally, if there's nice cocktails, I will drink them, but my family's not like that. So like, mm-hmm. I'll just be drinking some, some beers most likely. Uh, I gotta, I'll have a question. I'll have a question for you guys surrounding beer. What's your favorite, what's your favorite piss beer? You know, like yeah. nationally known, like not like Jenny light. I mean, Jenny light, Jenny does count. It is a piss beer. Uh, I was going to say like any domestic. So like Labatt's counts. Yeah, Labatt's counts. Like, nothing fancy. Like, I you're feel literally like Labatt just, like, is just, like, too, like, regional. Any just, like, piss beer. That's a that's a gold standard, in my opinion. Any, like, pissy lager, you know? I think Labatt definitely counts. I had a Labatt. I had, like, a blue white the other day, and I hated it. I'm going to be honest with you. I fuck. I, I love a blue white. Uh, yeah, Labatt's, like, my go-to, but I can't I can't say it's my favorite piss work because I'm with you, Adam. I, I think yeah. it's a higher tier, which is yeah. a, a silly northeastern thing to say. But yeah, but for some reason, you know what I fucked with heavy in college that like you're going out to the frats and it was like this beer was there and I'm like, oh shit, it's not Natterdays, it's not Natty it Light, it's not Key, it's not Peastone, it's not Bush, La- Bush Lattes, Bush Lattes. Bush lattes Dude, I remember the first time I had a Bush Light, I was like, oh, I've never had this shit. It's gonna stink. And I remember I said, like, okay, Bush, mm-hmm. okay. I could do Bush. Bush is my favorite piss. Josh, did you have a Blapple when they were around? Yes. Bush Light Apples. Those were sure. phenomenal. Who did those were delicious? Blapple. I had some yeah, blapples. I mean they were there there plenty were, of Blapples. Yeah, mine is the one I'm constantly yeah. drinking on the show. It's Coors. I'm with Mark. Ma- of the like national beers that are everywhere, I like Coors Light the best. Yeah, mine is something that I've been I've been sending a lot of pictures of recently. I prefer. The lesser filling, better tasting, thirst quenching ability of a nice Miller Light. Mm. I hate Miller. Oh my! Miller Light is my go-to best beer. Ugh. I also like Miller High Life. Yeah, I've actually never had a High Life. The champagne of beers. I've never had a champagne of beers. 
I do like a I do like a banquet as well. I don't always go with the white. Coors heavy. Ooh. I, I I do enjoy a banquet beer from time to time. <laughs> Coors the banquet beer. All right, Mark, it's back to you. I I think here I I just gotta I gotta play it safe. I gotta go with a with a Thanksgiving classic. I'm gonna go stuffing. I am wow. a stuffing enjoyer. Um, I feel like that take is becoming less popular these days. People are anti-stuffing, it seems, in recent years. I enjoy stuffing. Good, st- you know, get some celery in there. You know, get some good seasoning on it. Delicious. It, Adam took the the main <laughs> form of bread, so I had to go with the secondary form of bread, which is the stuffing. I'm so mad because like, it's dinner such rolls is such pick. a good pick. Oh God damn it! I w- I really wanted mac and cheese because I never have it at my family's celebration and i've always wanted it my entire life hear me out i'm thinking about just going potato four ways right now roasted potatoes oh god a little scallop right no uh, no i okay okay this sucks because honestly out of the foods that i personally enjoy there's only like one more and it feels it feels really troll to put this as your two, but this as this actually makes sense. First off, they pair together greatly. Well, plus, you have back to back, so you can technically make it three. But this deserves second round. I want this to okay. get the recognition it deserves. Similar to where mashed potatoes was the ultimate base, the ultimate sauce to cover it all up, and it's not fucking cranberry sauce, you sick bastards. It's the gravy. It's gravy. Fucking that's such a valid added. second round pick. It is. I mean, it's like, such a valid turkey, second round like your pick. turkey needs to get injected and basted. Baste me in fucking gravy, okay? <laughs> Lather me up, put me in a bath of it, and I'll fucking consume it through my veins all day. I love it. Can't get enough of a good fucking gravy. Oh, it ties everything in together. It's fantastic. As for the third yeah. round pick, um, this one's a little untraditional, I guess. We're going to things that I care about. Our big dessert. While we do have a pumpkin pie and the the, the pie my grandfather likes, I don't want to say him just in case it's yours, Mark. We do, I guess, in an Italian thing, we make cheese stick, cheesecake. Oh, that's such a good pick. I I've been debating as whether or not I wanted a good cheesecake. We do homemade cheesecakes for Thanksgiving. And it's up there in the third round. That's my pick. It's just, I had to get my sweet in here. I've built the base of my consumption. You guys can take the strong suits, and I will build the the backbone, the backbone of yeah. Christmas. Dude, cheesecake is arguably one of, if not my favorite dessert. I love yeah. cheesecake so it's much. Tremendous. So much. I, oh, yeah. Cheesecake is the S tier dessert. Yeah. Um, a, little bit of, a little bit of cherry filling on that. Oh, cherry. yeah. Stra- I, I I go strawberry. Okay, classic. I'm just a good apple. plain New York style. I do love a plain. I don't New need York. anything on top. You know, I I feel like I should get my dessert out of the way now, so I will because I. But I'm just hoping my last pick comes back around. I say I'm I'm focused on building a roster right now. I already yeah. have the main and a I, drink. I need I, to fill it up. I think my last pick will come back around to me, and if it doesn't, I've got to back up. So I'll go with my dessert, and that's a raspberry pie. We we have a raspberry pie every year at Mm. Thanksgiving, and raspberry is my preferred pie. Mm. I raspberry anything gets me. All right, I just (laughs) love raspberry. There's always a good raspberry pie, homemade, of course. You know, we don't do any of the. Any of the bullshit buying pies, all right? Everything's homemade. Raspberry pie, nothing tastes better after a big meal, in my opinion. Because I, f- I feel like it's lighter. It's lighter than a pumpkin. It's lighter than a pecan. You know, it's, it's a lighter sort of pie. I won't mention my favorite Thanksgiving pie, um, partially because, again, it's volatile. Like I think it can be made poorly. Um I won't mention it because maybe somebody else will bring it up and it's not going to be one of my picks, but a different fruit pie. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I will say uh, something, things I won't be mentioning are like a banana cream pie. You know how much I love a cream pie in in multiple ways. You know how much I love a good (laughs) pie pie made out of cream. Mm -hmm. What cream pie? What cream pie? (laughs) 
All right, I got my next pick here. Like I said, I'm building a roster, right? I've got my main. I've got my drink. I need at least a side that I know I can go to. And since these other sides have already been taken from me, I got to go with something hearty, you know, something that can really, mm-hmm. really stick to your ribs, you know? We mentioned rolls already, but there's another starch that can be brought to the party. And that's some good cornbread. My next pick is going to be cornbread. Ooh. I yeah. forget you don't have white people Thanksgiving. <laughs> well, I absolutely have white people Thanksgiving. <laughs> we don't have cornbread. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you. Yeah, I mean cornbread is so good. Just or just all of it. Give me a good if it's a really well made cornbread, put some honey on it. Oh you cut it lather in half, put a piece of turkey on it, lather it in butter with some honey. Brother. Brother. I don't have anything else to say. Cornbread. Great pick. Great pick. All right. Um, my third pick here, I'm going to take us to a vegetable. Um, I don't know people have heard Already me, oh, don't like suck. the pick. But this one. <laughs> Already, this one, Adam, it's your worst it pick. It doesn't the draft. even matter because it's a candied yam, so it's sweet anyways. So I guess to me, what- that doesn't even count as a vegetable because it's just like you're eating brown sugar. So are we talking, if I may, like mm-hmm. a sweet potato with some brown sugar and butter and stuff? Like yeah. oh, or like okay. okay. No, like I like yams. Yeah. Yams. Yams. Kind of like a sweet potato. Potato potato. They're similar, they're not the different. Same. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, candied yams. Why do you why do you love candied yams so much? Adam? Um I don't know. I just do. I've never had them before. So I, I couldn't. It's I couldn't it's you know it's a Thanksgiving staple and it's kind of like a, a sweet take on a vegetable. Do and you the juxtaposition between all the other you know savory mm-hmm. uh, foods mm-hmm. that you traditionally have? Do uh, you like uh, skin them and mash them up together and stuff in like a savory? No, a they're sweet- normally like more cubed. Yeah. If that makes sense, oh, okay. like diced up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then because we do we do squash kind of like that. Yeah, we'll put them all together, maple syrup, a little brown sugar, butter. Yeah. Yeah, it's yummy. I just just water. Yeah, and then my fourth pick. You know, some people aren't a fan of turkey, and um, there's another um, meat that some people go for. Oh. That, in my opinion, can be better if done the right way than a bad turkey, and that's ham. Mm. Okay. I've talked to a couple people at work who just do ham instead because they like it better. And mm-hmm. as yeah. I'm missing a you know main staple here, yeah, absolutely go for whatever you like. I'm personally not a big ham fan. I think it's all right. It's fine. I think ham is okay. Um, I'll eat it. You know, we do we we uh, we do a little ham for Christmas Eve. We do for for Christmas we do ham and like a bunch of Polish food. Mm-hmm. Okay. So like we'll have the ham. I'll eat the ham. A little pierogi. Yeah, yeah. pierogies, kielbasa, halupchi. Yeah, well, I might good. never eat a pierogi again after Poland fucked me today. But I, that's that's another. <laughs> <one. Sorry. laughs> yeah, I know it's a sad day for all of us Polacks out there. Uh, yeah, ham. I look. That's a four D chess play right there. Yep. Waiting until mm-hmm. the fourth round to get the secondary Thanksgiving that's big meat. Brain. It is. Yeah, that's really yeah. big brain. All right. So for my last pick. Like I said, building a roster here. I got the main. I got the side. I got the drink. You know what else I need? I need a dessert. I need a dessert for sure. Everybody else already has a dessert. We've got cheesecake, raspberry pie, pumpkin pie. I could go with another pie for sure. I could definitely go with another pie, but I'm not gonna. Instead, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go with what a friend of mine brought to Friendsgiving that we did like a week ago. Um, and he brought something that he makes all the time, and it's really good. Banana pudding. Mm. Vanilla wafers? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Wafers in it. Wafers on top of it. Oh. Bananas in it. Banana pudding. I love pudding. I love bananas. Banana. I've been eating so many. I've, I've been eating bananas like they've been going out of style recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Uh, and part of it may have been spurred by the banana pudding that I had at Friendsgiving like a week and a half ago. It's another one of my favorite desserts. Uh, the Spirit Room, it's a bar down on State Street uh, 
for those of you in Rochester. Um, they make banana pudding uh, as well, and they are their banana pudding is stupid good. It's a real, it's a real, it's a real good bar. It's a nice bar. They're like kind of spooky, and they, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, but yeah, the spirit room. Shout out to their banana pudding. But banana pudding is gonna be my fourth pick. Mark, we're back to you. What's your final pick for your for your draft here? So I'm going to take a beverage, but I'm caught between two. One is for the meal, and the other is for after the meal. And I think I'm going to go with after the meal. That's it's a good decision. I feel because I, I was caught Which between a, 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 I was caught between a nice glass of red wine. Lo, love a love a good cab on Thanksgiving. Maybe maybe uh, see party. that seems a little too much for me. Like I don't <clears> know if I can drink wine like that during Thanksgiving dinner. To be no, it's just you just dinner. have one glass, sip on, wash it down a little bit. It's next to the water. You know, if you want to wash it down with the water, that's. You know, I'm not sitting there getting wine drunk and during I'm Thanksgiving. Here for it. I'm here for it. It's it's classic. I'm, if it's you class. wanted to get wine drunk, no one would judge you. It's oh, classic. Yes, it's fuck. I'm here I, for it. I don't do it. Plenty of my family does, and but that's because I save it for after the meal. When you sit down and you get a, a couple ice cubes, and oh. you, you sip on a beautiful little Irish whiskey with the rest of my family. Because we are a large Irish family. And by the rest of my family, I mean, it's basically just my aunt and I that drink whiskey. And after the dinner, she's like, Mark, let's have a whiskey. And I'm like, I will always have a whiskey. And just a couple ice cubes, nice uh, nice glass of Red Breast on the rocks. Red Breast, oh, my favorite Irish whiskey. It's fantastic. A phenomenal, phenomenal uh, whiskey. And just... No better way. You, you sit down. You have your, you have your little raspberry pie. The game's on. You're sipping on a whiskey. No better way way to end Thanksgiving, in my opinion. That's it. Could also could also if you're not a whiskey drinker, be substituted for Bailey's since we are getting into Bailey's season. Mm. Yeah, this is this is. I don't a, hate that pick. I might just go batshit crazy and just do something. I mean, but this is specifically a food and, and beverage one, right? Right, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> this is a tough one, and this is gonna seem like a dull pick, and be like, "Oh, of course, this is you know, Mister Irrelevant, whatever." But don't, don't, don't overlook this last pick. Okay, this last pick is versatile. This last pick can be used in many different ways, enjoyed in many different, many different, uh, uh, you know, conceptions. And uh, I think I'm gonna have this this guy uh, tell you what it is if you help it out with. It's corn, okay? Corn is fantastic. You need corn. It's overlooked, right? I mean, who's going to pick corn? I'm not picking corn one one. Nobody needs fucking corn like that. But you, it's essential to the dish. It's a little sprink and bink. It's like the cheese over everything else. You know, you get the rice bowl. I'm going back to this rice bowl mentality for me. Okay, this is my cheese. I get the corn up there. I need the corn. Corn goes on everything. Goes well with the gravy. Goes well with the mash. Goes well with literally everything that you can put on your plate. It's essential. You can do a creamed corn. You can do corn like cob. You can do just kernel kernel corn. You can put your corn and bread. Corn bread. I mean, it's fantastic. You need corn. The kid loves it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that concludes the main portion of our draft. I'll ask if anybody has any extra. Were there any honorable mentions, things that you were thinking of that you have, maybe stuff that's specific to your Thanksgiving? I mean, to be fair, you wanted to bring up? To back to corn. Corn was my next pick if this draft had continued. I see. Corn's good. I was debating picking it instead of yams. I probably should have, but. We got a, anyone, uh, anyone's family do cookies as well as a pie oh, yeah. or a cake? Yeah, you know, cookies, just good. Yeah. We usually just, just do pies. Um we usually probably, I don't quite remember, but I know Brian's mom makes like, probably, I think she just does pumpkin and apple. Mm. Apple pie was the one I was referring yeah. to earlier. Mm. Um, Rather volatile, like apple pie, I believe. Apple pie, I need it to be made a very specific way. Otherwise, it won't be very good. Mm-hmm. If it's made uh, traditionally with like just more pie crust over the top, it's going to be too much pie crust. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't like a lattice? No, I, the lattice is fine, but like, oh, the, you don't like, like the flat down with the oh, like the like, flat yeah. down, like the three holes in the middle Slit. type shit. Yeah. yeah, 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 that's a little too much. A lattice is fine. I prefer my apple pro apple pie with um more like an apple crisp topping. Yeah, some you know, crumbly some breadcrumbs, uh, uh, you know, sugar, and blah 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 blah. That's how I prefer it personally. Um. But no, we don't do like cookies or anything like that. Um, I can't even think of. I asked this question about like traditions you may have on Thanksgiving. I don't think my family does anything special. We think we were trying to make a thing happen. Normally for Christmas, we would go out and watch a movie at night, like go to the theater. Me, and my dad, and my brother. So mm -hmm. we're trying to do that. We've been trying to do that the last couple years for Thanksgiving. But like this year, we're just like doing work in the garage like it's just do something afterwards to keep us from fucking you know just melting away into our chair but <laughs> honestly i don't watch the night game normally most of the time because i'm in a food coma and just trying to stay awake and alive so the the thanksgiving night game tends to get overlooked for me agreed yeah i don't think i know some people do that where they like go to the movies on thanksgiving mm -hmm. that's like it that's like a you're not the first person to tell me that they do that. Like Connor, a uh, friend of the show, former uh, guy who was on the show every once, once, of every, the show. once every six months. Uh, <clears throat> I think Connor he's still on. <laughs> I, I think he's still. I think he's still on. Uh, I believe him and like his brother and his mom go to the movies on Thanksgiving every year. I think. I I did a uh, used to. I haven't done it in a couple of years. Uh, my friend uh, Mara and I used to do our Black Friday shopping on Thanksgiving. We were those oh. people. We we would yeah. go to Walmart. And by Black Friday shopping, I mean we would go to Walmart and like make fun of people that were shopping yeah. at Walmart on Thanksgiving. Junior wanted to do. Junior was just telling me he's like, I want to get drunk and go to Black Friday shopping and then just take shit from people that that find on the shelf. Like go to the shelves and just, I'm like, I'm gonna just get arrested for causing a drunk <laughs> disorder. I'm like, what are you? Right, you want what to do bit? illegal things? What, That's what, what is you this bit? To do. You're gonna annoy someone like a drunk asshole on Thanksgiving and they're gonna fucking call the cops because they're psychos who shop on Thanksgiving. What? That's a blasphemous thing to do. To, to be clear, I wouldn't make fun of them to their faces. We were just like sure, talking sure. about it. It's like, hey, look at that yeah. loser. Uh do you uh we used to go out every year on Black Friday, like when I was in high school with a group of friends and my friend Ben and I would have a would have a competition every time we went out, like every year we would go to the mall to see how many random people we can make it laugh at, like things that we say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that was fun. Do you guys do you guys participate in Black Friday shopping? Yeah, I've I've done it no. multiple times. No, I do, friend. but not in like some crazy capacity. Like I'll, I'll like I said, I yeah. usually like I'll go to the mall on Black Friday. I'll just kind of walk around. I'll go to like now. I work in retail, uh, and I'll be working seven to five this Friday. So mm -hmm. I will want nothing to do but to go to bed after I leave, um, uh, this Friday. But Black Friday shopping is fun. I I prefer Cyber Monday. I'm more of an online shopper myself, yeah. anyways. Yeah. So, yeah. The only time I was ever in a mall on Black Friday was when I worked at the Marks Pizzeria in the food court. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can imagine working it was, in the food court on Black Friday was awful. Yeah, that sounds like the worst thing. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, just to recap here, our teams. Josh went with basically a, a KFC Famous Bowl. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mashed potatoes, gravy, cheesecake, and corn. Uh, Mark had mac and cheese, stuffing, raspberry pie, and whiskey, in particular red breast mm -hmm. whiskey. Uh, myself, I had turkey, beer, cornbread, and banana pudding. Uh, and Adam had pumpkin pie, dinner rolls, candy yams, and ham for his team. So I think those are some, some good squads. Um yeah, that was, a, that was a fun segment. Uh, in lieu of time constraints here, we're, we're going to skip over the Week 12 NFL preview. I don't want the show to go mm -hmm. six hours long, so we're going to jump right ahead to uh, our FanDuel lineups. We are going to have the Hot Stove Parlay, the NFL Parlay for this week. 
we will put it together and we'll post it on Twitter and whatnot. We just won't do it. We won't hash it out live in this episode. So we're going to jump right ahead and do our FanDuel lineups. Uh, jo- uh, Mark, I don't know where Josh went, so if you want to start yeah, I'll give do us it. your FanDuel lineup, you can go right ahead. Um, so every – my entire lineup is on Thanksgiving. I did an all-Thanksgiving lineup. I'm pretty <laughs> sure Josh did this bit last year. I did um, – we talked about it before. I think I mean, even more specifically, Josh did an all Cowboys game lineup last year. Yes. Way to be original, at Mark. Way to be original. At the at the very least, he put as many players as FanDuel would allow from the yeah, yeah, Cowboys. Yeah, from the game. game. Yeah. Yeah, they played the Raiders. Yeah. Yeah. In uh this year. This is the first playing. time in like five years. I'm sorry to cut you off. This is the first time in like five years the Bears aren't playing the Lions on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It seemed like they always did. It uh, legitimately was like four years in a row. Oh, was it really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's close. But this year, I do have two Cowboys. They're playing the Giants. I went with the stack. I went with Dak the stack with C.D. Lamb. Who knows if the Giants are actually – if the Giants are actually good, they just sort of got their doors blown off by uh, the Lions, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was the mm-hmm. Lions. Um, they just got their doors blown off by the Lions. Um, but along with that, along with that stack, I needed something else from that game, and I only had thirty five hundred dollars left, so I only have so I also have the Giants defense. <laughs> 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 because it was the only defense that was playing on Thanksgiving that was also thirty five hundred dollars. Death taxes and committing to the bit, Mark. <laughs> the way to commit would just be take Dallas's defense, I think, in this format. You didn't have the money for it. Josh. I didn't I know. have the money I for it, Josh. Yeah, I know. I know. I no, you. I'm not doing it. Um, so I've got the defense going up against my quarterback <laughs> and one of my wide receivers. Um, my two running backs are why am I free? Jamal Williams and James Cook. Jamal Williams leading the NFL in rushing touchdowns this year, just like we all had on our bingo card going into the season. Um, guys, a touchdown machine. James Cook actually started getting touches for Buffalo last week. Maybe they're going to start running the ball more because it worked. It sure as hell worked last week. Both him and Singletary looked really good. Um, so I'll go with those two. Going along with CeeDee Lamb, I've got Justin Jefferson. The Vikings are playing the Patriots. The Patriots are stinky poo-poo. Um, is that the night game? Yes. Mm-hmm. So he's got prime time Kirk throwing to him. but Oh, Justin, I forgot about that. Jesus. So, But Justin Jefferson, maybe he gets me 80 yards. Maybe well, yeah. he gets me in the end zone. Like After he got um, clamped last week, you know, maybe he's got a better week ahead. They, Two catches for 19 yards. You know, yeah, tough. so – Bounce back week for JJ. I've also got Isaiah McKenzie because this is where I realized, you know, maybe I'm starting to run out of money a little bit. <laughs> um, but then I did some maneuvering. So Isaiah McKenzie, 5,200. At tight end, I've got Hunter Henry. Um, tight end options rather limited on Thanksgiving <laughs> if I didn't want TJ Hawkinson. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I went with Hunter Henry at 4,900. But all that maneuvering was enough to get me Stefan Diggs in the flex. Which, if, anytime I can run out of lineup with C.D. Lamb, Justin Jefferson, and Stefan Diggs, I'm a happy man. There's a lot of points to be had between that wide receiver trio. All right. The all-Thanksgiving lineup. Josh, why don't you let us know what your fan lineup looks like? More than more than happy to. I, by the way, we should do that. We should have all just made – that type of lineup too. I would have been down for that. That'd be fun. Oh, like a Thanksgiving Day slate? <laughs> yeah. We um, can certainly do that. We can certainly do that. I um oh is that last week's I finished in dead last. Yeah you did finish in last last week. Jesus Christ. I finished in second again. Yeah oh. that's true. <laughs> did finish in second yet again last week. It's like Good eight Christ. weeks in a row. <laughs> All right well oh I clicked scores that's why not okay I was like how do I know where mine is there's two okay uh, this week's game stack, I went with, uh, I told you the quarterback stacks were disgusting this week. I liked none of them. I settled on this one, potentially MVP this year. Uh, Lamar Jackson is guy's good. Jacksonville this weekend. 
and I've paired him up with his wide receiver two last week because, of course, everyone had, like you were saying, Demarcus Robinson going off last week for nine catches and 130 yards. But I got Devin Duvernay. Hopefully he's number one option. Uh, and Lamar Jackson, that's my stack of the week. Devin Duvernay, cheeky at 5,600. Uh, running the ball, I went with, like you said it earlier, Nunez, this guy might rush 35 times this week. It's Kenneth Walker uh, against the Raiders. Raiders' uh, rushing defense is stinky poo-poo, okay? Get it through your heads, and Kenneth Walker's the best running back in the league right now. So, actual true pure runner in my mind. It's like him and Chubb are right there for me. Uh, second running back I went with, this guy is going to kill playoff Lenny. Lenny is dead. He's taking his job and not turning back. Turning back, it's Rashad White. Welcome to the program, kid. Uh, I'm expecting – at least one, probably two touchdowns for this kid. They're going to really pound this guy. Yeah, I mean, they're playing one of the – I'm sorry, I cut you off. They're playing one of the worst uh, run defenses. If it's not Houston, yes, Cleveland is the worst run defense in the NFL. That's right. Uh, Mark, you said it. I also got a guy playing on Thanksgiving. I got two of them, actually. The first one is it's CeeDee Lamb. You know, I uh, had a pretty decent week last week with Dak. Again, his target share when Dak is in there is, is ridiculous. It's absolutely mm-hmm. insane. The Cowboys are averaging more than 38 points a game when Dak plays this year, so I, I got to put that guy in my lineup. Uh, next up on the toting pole is T. Higgins, friend of the program, Austin Westridge. He's on sometimes. He told us last <laughs> week that Titans defense is, is stinky, specifically in giving up long plays and lots of yards. And that I took T. Higgins against them because uh, – Without Jamar Chase, the deep threat, of course, is T. Higgins. Chuck it deep to him, my fella. Uh, at tight end, I have T.J. Hawkinson, the second player who will be playing on Thanksgiving. Uh, I like a bounce back from Minnesota's offense this week, even with New England, who's pretty pretty stuff, pretty stiff, I, sh- I would say. But uh, I expect two touchdowns in that game. Maybe T.J. catches one for Minnesota, at least it is. Uh, really scraping the bottom of the barrel here with the flex. A guy who, you know, I've seen a lot of good things from recently as the three receivers listed ahead of him have had injuries. That's Sky Moore, rookie in Kansas City, finally getting targets after being the only receiver left on the field. And uh, (laughs) defensively, this is just far too cheap for a defense with their best players back playing Matt Ryan. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers at 3,600, and my God, they might be my highest scorer this week. So that's my lineup, and uh, we'll see you in first place. All right. Well, my lineup took a strange turn. I'm going to be honest with you. I originally started with a Lamar Jackson stack, and I decided that it wasn't – I couldn't quite make it work monetarily. Um, If I wanted Lamar Jackson and then to run it back with another player and – to be able to get running backs that I wanted with that, it was a whole thing. I, I could just couldn't do it. So I ended up going with uh, a game stack here um, with Joe Burrow against the aforementioned stinky uh, at allowing a lot of yards defense, Titans defense. Um, and we're actually going with the death by a thousand cuts options. Um and his two pass catchers that I'll be taking are going to be Tyler Boyd and Hayden Hurst. Mm-hmm. Um, I have no rhyme or reason for it. Hayden Hurst isn't very good. And I didn't know he was Tyler, on the Bengals. And Tyler Boyd, say? yeah. He points to the Bengals not now. saying much, but he was a top 10 tight end option here for most of the season. Again, yeah, that's, not that's saying, saying literally nothing. <laughs> yeah, ne- so was Evan Ingram. Yeah, yeah. I could have stepped on the field and bet a top 10 tight end option. if I got Dallas Goddard was like tight end four. The Dallas got it's good though. Like, that's yeah, that's true. What the hell's we said Hayden Hurst and Evan Ingram. Like, hey, if you're if you're putting Dallas Goddard in there, I mean that's <laughs> yeah. I, here's the thing. Everyone before the season, for whatever reason, didn't think Dallas Goddard was good. Who is everyone? Like, this is a straw man. You're every, making this up. Every, Mark's just like, a big Zach Ertz guy. I am a big Zach Ertz guy. I love Dallas guy. Goddard wasn't um, that good. Was but no, like before the season, I was talking about how he was the tight end I'd be like targeting in fantasy leagues on the radio and stuff. And everyone was like, why? 
to like go get Travis Kelsey or Mark Andrews. I'm like, I, well, yeah, I get Dallas because Travis Goddard. Kelsey and Mark Andrews are the two like difference maker options of the possession in fantasy. Yeah, but I'm like, I'll get Dallas Goddard. He'll give me nine points a game or whatever, and I'll you take that from your tight end. And they're like, no, nah, you got to go for the big guns. Dallas Goddard stinks. I'm like, well, why, why does Dallas Goddard stink all of a sudden? He's been good his entire career. No one listens. Right. I don't know if anybody else saw this stat, but the difference in fantasy points between Travis Kelsey and the next best tight end, which is Mark Andrews, is bigger than the difference between Mark Andrews and the 31, 31st best tight end, whoever the fuck it is. That's I cool. believe it. I believe it. Travis Kelsey is good at football. That's fair. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, back to my lineup here. Secondary game stack. We've got two running backs going at it. Two bad run defenses. Two teams that I can't say the two teams that should be able to put up points. Two bad run defenses and two running backs that are heavily involved in their offenses, and that's Josh Jacobs and Ken Walker. Um, if Pete Carroll has his way, Kenneth Walker will be running the ball 34 times uh, this week against a Raiders team. They should, in theory, just beat the shit out of, especially because Seattle has a good secondary. Um, mm-hmm. But Seattle's run defense isn't, isn't all that up to snuff. So give me Josh Jacobs. He might catch a couple passes, might accidentally get into the end zone. Um, who knows, right? Those two good options. Oh, I never have said I'm running it back uh, in the the Cincinnati game with Traylon Burks. We had targets last week against the um, against the Packers. He's back from injury. Uh, started to play. He played really well in the second half against Green Bay last week. Uh, you know, hopefully. In the case, in in being the case with a lot of rookies, you know, hopefully he's starting to starting to get those gears turning, right, to be a good player in the NFL. I'm also going with Raheem Mostert. Is he the number one running back in Miami? I don't know the answer to that question, but what I do know is that even if he's not, they're playing the Houston Texans this week. Um, this could very easily end up being a throw to score, run to win game. Uh, in which the the Dolphins are up by a lot by the end of the first half, and they just run the piss out of the ball in the second half. And, mm-hmm. you know, for he most gets in the end zone, it's all gravy. Um, that leaves me with two stragglers here. Uh, the actual number one in Baltimore, Demarcus Robinson. Uh, mind you, Demarcus Robinson has gotten eight or more targets in two of the last three games. Um, and Devin DuVernay has, and I'm not kidding you, one target in each of the last two contests in which he's played. It's got to go up. He's due. Not not great, Bob. He's it due. doesn't have to go up. It could be zero. <laughs> it's, true. it's true. Could be zero. That's true. Uh, so I got Demarcus Robinson, uh, and then we're going to go with the Buccaneers defense in the final game before the, uh, the Predator comes back uh, for, <laughs> for Cleveland. So, you know, this team's defeated. They suck. Uh, they're just ready to like get their their stats merchant back um, because you know people snooze. Deshaun Watson wasn't very good at winning football games. He was a good fantasy quarterback, but yeah, right. that's beside the point. Anyways, uh, Tampa Bay's defense starting to get healthy. This is a game they should win handily because again, Cleveland sucks. Uh, so give me the the Tampa Bay defense. Um, yeah, that does it for that. That does it for this episode. Uh, so before we head out, I'd like to say thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, make sure to follow us on Twitter at Hot Soap Pod. That's at Hot Soap Pod on Twitter. Follow Mark at Marker underscore box for outside the box score related things, even though that show will be going on this YouTube channel. I forgot about that. Outside the box score, live here, Sunday morning. Might, uh, might, might be back on Twitter on Saturday. Depends on what my plans are for the weekend. So. Okay, well that doesn't help. Uh, it'll be it'll be wherever it is. Who knows? I'm just right? saying we we will be moving back to here permanently, but I'm just saying this weekend might be a variation. Hmm. Uh, if, well, come back here for sharp or stupid, whatever Josh decides to do the show. Wednesdays, yeah. we, Monday, Wednesday, we, Friday. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. He's doing it three times a week, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Um, a steady stream of content. We are content you. machines. Got yeah, sharp. Uh, Adam, thank you for joining us for the second half of this episode. Yeah, I appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, other than that, we love you, uh, and we will see you next time. Thanks. Thanks.